Uh, what game are we playing today? We are playing Cover Your Kingdom. And there's more to it than just that, Matt. You see this whole stack of cards. So Cover Your Kingdom is from Grandpa Beck's Games, and it's a derivative of Cover Your Assets. So I don't know if you played Cover Your Assets. We're going to do the review as if you haven't, but that's a fun game too. You ought to check it out. So Cover Your Kingdom. In Cover Your Kingdom, you are a ruler in a kingdom, and you are trying to amass a whole bunch of uh, creatures to your kingdom, and you do that by placing them in different areas. This is your kingdom, essentially, and it plays up to six players, so we got nice six player boards. So we'll use my player board and show you exactly how it is. The whole point of the objective of Cover Your Kingdom is to get the most points. You'll play through this deck of cards once, and you can play up to six players. So everybody's gonna start with six cards. Let me show you what these look like. So for example, if this is my starting hand of cards, I've got a Pig C, Peg Legacies, oh, I've got special cards with some Moblins, Spydra, a Unicorn, and a Volkent. So I've got a variety of creatures. So the way you do it, as you can see, they're all different values and you're gonna be making those in pairs. You're gonna create clans. So right now, I don't have a single pair in my hand, but I'll show you how it plays. All right, so once everybody's got their starting hand of cards, you're ready to go. And on your turn, you can do one or two actions, and you can do the same action twice if you want. One action that you can do, the most common, well, maybe it's not the most common, is to create a pair from your hand. So if you have two of the same kind of cards, so if I had two pixies, which I don't, unfortunately, but if I had two pixies, I could take them and I can set them in my kingdom. Now on my kingdom, I'm gonna have two areas. I've got a mountain area and a field and a valley area. And you can see that pixie can be either in a field or in a mountain. So if I had a pair of pixies, I could put them in either location. I would, I would put them there, for example. And then if I had another pair, say I had a pair of unicorns, I could put them also in the valley. So if I had two of those, and you're going to stagger these side by side like that. If I had three of a card, I can't. I only make a pair of two to make a clan. So you're going to stack them back and forth like that. So let's go ahead and go a little bit further to show you the other actions. So let's suppose I've already got a pair, a couple of pairs out there. So that's action number one. You can make a pair. The other thing you could do is you could make a pair from the discard pile. So if I had a clacken. I could play a clacken from my hand to add it here. So for example, if I hadn't played this pair, I could take one, I could take the top discard pile, and I could make a clan that way. Actually, that shouldn't be in the discard pile. All right. The other thing you can do is you can add to a pile that's already there. So if I already got a clacken for one of my actions, I can add to it. So that's how I can put more to it. Pretty sweet, huh? The other thing you can do is steal from somebody else or recruit from somebody else. The way you do that is you look at what else everybody else has. And I could say, you know what? I like his Peg Legolas. Peg Legasus. So I can say, I want your Peg Legasus. And if he's got nothing to combat that, then I would take it. If he has one of those same cards in his hands, he could play it to defend. In which case, if I had another one, I could play it to steal again, and it can keep going higher and higher. There's also wild cards, like this one. They're multicolored. There's a Spydra, which actually counts as two cards, and there's another one that is just 20 points. So if it goes back and forth, whoever wins takes that clan, makes it one big clan, and adds it to their kingdom. <laughs> the other thing you can do on your turn is, or one of your actions, is to play a special card. And there's a, a handful of special cards in there. It'll say at the bottom what you can do. So, for example, this says swap one of your top clans with a clan atop another one. Which, in this case, I don't want to do because I've got some valuable ones. But this guy, maybe he wants to play that. If he played the Moblins on me, he could take his Vulcan and swap that with my Pig Legasus because he saw how many I had. And then he would be adding it to his, and I would be taking his Vulcan. So that's what the Moblins do. So there's a lot of special cards like that. You can see the Hypnogriff. Take three cards from another player. Let me see, I'll show you a few other ones 
But let's just show a few cards that you have in play. So you got some Braggans, you got some Yeti, you got a Leprechaun Man, you got some Hentars. Let's see what else we got on the special cards. You've got your Cyclops, Poor Soul. Oh, here's a fun one. So this is Dumbledore's Elves. So you could remove a clan atop another player's stack from the game. So if this is getting really valuable, it was fought over, you could play that and say, you know what? That pig Legacy is out of the game. Crazy. The last thing you can do on your turn is simply, let's see, I'm back up to here. So I've got my cards. The last thing, if I don't have a way to make a pair or fight over a pair or take one from the discard pile, I simply discard and draw a card to replace it. And then at the end of your turn, after you've taken your one or two actions, you draw back up. So you've got your six cards in hand and you're ready to go on to the next player. So really, that's all it is. You continue to go around and around and around. Everybody playing pairs, building up their kingdom, fighting and re over who they're recruiting. And once you've gone through this deck, that'll be all gone. And you'll get down to what people have in their hands. And it's those last few card plays where you get... Um, a lot of recruiting or hopefully and then at the end you just add all of your cards together all of your points from up in the top corner and see who wins there you go that's how you play cover your kingdom so what do you think about cover your kingdoms cover your kingdom is a fun game uh it's a fun family game fun for friends and it's got a lot of take that in it and I can't help but do a comparison to Cover Your Assets. In Cover Your Assets, you basically are building one stack of a lot of different assets. It, it plays similarly. There's not uh, twist cards where you can mix it up. But what I like about Cover Your Kingdom to begin with is you've got two areas. So immediately, even in a three-player game, you've got four piles that you can be stealing from. In a six-player game, you're going to have ten piles that you could be stealing from. What we found in our games is... We're really not going to make pairs from the discard pile. We are typically fighting or recruiting, trying to get from each other. So this one has a lot more of take that, come after each other, a lot of twists, a lot of buildup in how big these uh, clans can get because of trying to steal those or recruit those from other people. Uh, I love the artwork. It's very colorful, as you can see from all of these cards. And there's a lot of other um, twists to it. I like the that little bit of twist. So for example, one that we didn't show as well, is this wizard yeah he's he's very powerful but he can move a clan from the top to the bottom of a stack so that's one way if you get a big stack on top you can quickly move it to the bottom but each of the special cards there's only two of each in the deck what was the other one we had here was the the minotaur and that one is a skip a turn kind of thing so those add in a little bit of twist that Cover Your Assets didn't have that I like. The, the point spread in this game can be really varied. You may think, okay, we're going to go after the leader because they've got such big stacks. But if you don't have the right cards in your hand because of the luck of the draw, you're not going to be able to impact them. You're not going to be able to steal. So there's a big luck factor in the game. So if you don't like games with luck in that manner, you're not going to like it. But if you just want something fun, this is a great game. Another comparison to Cover Your Assets and cover your assets, you're going to a million dollars, or uh, a million points, I guess you could say. But it is dollars. So in this, it's just you play one round, you play through the deck once, most points wins. With cover your assets, you play multiple rounds until someone gets to a million. I like they just go through it once because of the luck factor in the game, because of how much is played into it. Obviously, it's fun, uh, fun artwork, uh, fun puns that are going on with all of this taken from a lot of different fantasy and sci-fi. So I've had a lot of fun with it. I think Cover Your Kingdom is, is a great family game, and I'd give it a four and a half out of five.